Well, it's that time of year again. Extreme Bench Rest has come and gone, and it's time to sit down and give some feedback on how things went from my perspective. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Extreme Bench Rest is probably the premier event of the Air Gunners shooting year. It's a massive competition in Phoenix, Arizona. It covers a huge range of different shooting disciplines and it draws massive amounts of people. There's probably a few hundred competitors that, that actually take part every year. So it's a very important event. And for the second year in a row, I have traveled across the Atlantic Ocean uh, from the Southern Hemisphere to the Northern Hemisphere, across continents, uh, not only to take part, but also to take my camera with and, and get some coverage of, of how the event went. And I was a little bit more prepared this year. Last year, I kind of just rocked up the day before, not 100% sure of what to expect. And that was a bit of a mistake. I was very jet lagged for the first few days of the competition. I couldn't concentrate properly. And I didn't really have time to set my gun up properly uh, for, for the different disciplines. So it was kind of just rock up and hope for the best. This year, I was a little bit more prepared. I arrived about five days early so I could get over jet lag. So by the time the competition came, I was, I was uh, wide awake and able to focus. And also had a few days to actually set my gun up properly. Uh, I borrowed a gun for the second year in a row. Um, it's a gun that thankfully I'm quite familiar with, but obviously being a gun that's not my own, I wanted to set it up the way that I wanted to shoot it. So I was able to do that in the time space this year before the competition, which really helped. The gun that I borrowed this year was the good old FX Impact. And I know a lot of you will be asking why didn't I use the Crown? Plain and simple, the Impact is the gun that I've had most experience with. And I wanted to be able to just pick it up and go for it and, and not have to worry about getting used to the gun. So the Impact was the logical choice. I did end up putting a Smooth Twist X barrel on it. I do think that the Smooth Twist X barrel uh, is a little bit better than the Smooth Twist. So I put the Smooth Twist X barrel on the Impact. But aside from that, it is a stock standard FX Impact. I brought my own pistol grip from home, just again to make it feel like my own gun. I did not have a special gun this year, it's a stock standard impact, and that impact was actually sold to somebody straight after I used it, so nothing special about it. And once I had it tuned the way I wanted it to shoot, this is what it was doing. Now take, keep in mind this is a, a 30 caliber. That's five shots at 50 yards at Egan's of Arizona's outdoor range. Uh, I will say there was pretty much no wind on the day, but that's that's like a 30 caliber sized hole so that gun was dialed in the first morning of the competition i uh, went to the practice range at the rio salado sportsman's club and i put five shots on paper at 75 yards again and not much wind and i mean that group size was tiny so again no excuses <laughs> last year my two favorite events were the speed silhouette and the field target and this year, things kicked off with the field target competition on the first day. I, I did pretty well last year. I got a fourth place overall, tied with Ted Beer. Um, so I was expecting to do well, and I felt really good in preparation for the competition. I was very, very steady on my, my setup. I, you know, I've, I've done a lot of shooting sitting down. So sitting down and, and resting on a, on a bar pod, I, I know I can keep very steady. So I wasn't concerned about that and the knockdown tar targets that we have to hit the the kill zones especially for the targets at longer ranges are pretty big so if you can keep still you've got a very good chance of hitting those you know taking that the, the wind conditions aren't too bad but i made a very very vital mistake this year and that is that when i created the the profile for the the gun i was going to use um, on strelock pro i completely forgot to enter the scope height in other words, the distance between the barrel and the scope. And that is something that is incredibly important to get right if you want to really get your trajectory locked in. And, um, you know, obviously, first priority would be to go out and, and validate the drop data out to 100 yards, but we just didn't have time to do that. So I had to rely on the, the, the data that Sherlock Pro was giving me. I missed a lot of targets, especially targets very close and very far. 
at the first few rounds of the, the field target, the first few uh, tents. About halfway through, I figured it out. I uh, estimated what the scope height was, put it into Sherlock Pro, and from, from there, the second half of the course, I actually did very well, but that was just a big stuff up on my part. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, and that's just the way it is. Field target is one of those competitions where everything that can go wrong will go wrong. The guys who, who took first place really did a good job. Thane Simmons, who took first place in the extreme class for the field target, was probably the best shooter overall in the whole competition. And you'll see as, as I move along in this video that you know he placed really well in all the other events as well. I really, really enjoy the field target setup. And another one of the things I, I really enjoy about it is the fact that everyone shoots at different times. So I was able to follow some of the, the shooters that I enjoy watching and, and uh, walk around with them and learn from them. You know, guys in the industry who make the guns that I use, um, other YouTubers and just shooters that I'm generally a big fan of who, who do well year after year. I shot a score of 28 this year, which as I said was, you know, I, I know I can shoot better than that, but it's still kind of somewhere in the middle. So I'm not the worst shooter of the day, which is I suppose a good thing. And I'll be way more prepared next year. And I'm gonna be coming with my game face on, hoping to get a medal of some sort in the field target. The other event that happens on the first day of Extreme Bench Rest is the Big Ball competition. And this is something that I actually really enjoy watching. It's something that I would take part in if I could own a Big Ball air gun, but the laws in South Africa make it quite difficult to get Big Ball air guns, so I'm generally just a spectator when it comes to this discipline. What I really like about Big Ball is that I, I think it really brings out the best in people. And I'm talking about manufacturers and shooters generally. You've got to be very you've got to have a very good understanding of how the guns work to you know shoot custom slugs you've got to try out a lot of different slugs you've got to understand uh how to set the gun up for those particular slugs and you do see a lot of custom guns out on the range i had the privilege of meeting a lot of guys that i don't often get to talk to uh, people in the industry like dana webb nick nielsen um, kip perot and tom coston big names in the in the big ball kind of arena and um, it was really a privilege to just sit down and chat to these guys about you know the differences between big ball shooting and kind of standard air guns and and how they actually interact and how we can learn from each other which is really really cool uh, just a real privilege to meet some really nice guys now the 25 meter this is the event I mentioned last year that I thought I would be best at simply because it's the distance that I shoot at most. And that was not the case. I realized very quickly last year that there are certain skill sets that I don't have that I would have needed for 25 meter. One of them being the ability to read wind flags and wind meters very well and make an adjustment accordingly. And um, I did not do very well last year, so I didn't even bother signing up for 25 meter this year, not just because I, I knew I wasn't gonna do well, but because the 25 meter is shot on the same day as some of the other events that I was doing and I didn't want to have to concentrate on both. So I didn't do 25 meter this year, but I did get some footage of the event and it's such a different discipline to the 75 and 100 yard extreme bench rest, totally different skill sets. With 25 meter, you, you're reading wind 25 meters from you, from you to the target. There's, there's maybe only one wind that you've got to account for. At 75 and 100, there are so many different winds that you have to account for that it's impossible to take a reading and know exactly where that shot's gonna hit. You have to rely very heavily on your SATA targets. But anyway, back to the 25 meter. I didn't compete this year, but here's a list of the results. Uh, special mention of Ken Hicks who got an incredibly good score. Well done Ken. I did also have some fun outside the competition itself. I went to watch a baseball game. I got stranded in the desert with no water or cell phone signal. I had some fun with a few pyromaniacs, got a bird hooked on coffee and saw a Japanese man throwing food at Charles. Needless to say, it was fun.
Next up, we'll take a look at the events I did very well in this year, the speed silhouette and the big one, the extreme bench rest. I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.